Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Enemy bombers can now reach any part of these United States. A devastating air attack could be launched against us at any moment. To meet this threat, we must have early warning. That's why one million civilian volunteers are desperately needed in the Ground Observer Corps. To meet this threat of a surprise attack, our armed forces and radar network are on the job day and night. But radar has its limitations. Hostile aircraft could sneak through undetected. Our defenses are incomplete without a strong Ground Observer Corps. And one million volunteers, men, women, retired people, and teenagers are desperately needed. Just a few hours a week of your spare time, that's all you need give. Do your part. Contact your civil defense office and join the Ground Observer Corps today. This message is brought to you as a public service. Nugget Crossing was a small community of trappers' cabins dominated by a rambling two-part building. Bart Riggs, local agent for a freight line, used one part of the building for his office and home. Widow Handley occupied the other part. She operated a store and trading post to serve the nearby trappers. Twelve-year-old Dave Martin and his small dog lived with the widow when his father, who worked for Riggs, was on the trail with freight. One morning, Dave rushed into the store excitedly with his dog barking at his heels. My Hanley, my dad's in sight. He's coming down the hill. Gracious sake, Dave. Oh, I shot white. Quiet, Wendy, quiet, fellas. Oh, the way you two take on when Dave still returns from a trip, I never saw the light. Come on out front, my Hanley. Come and see Dad with the dog in. Come on. All right, all right. There he is, my Hanley. Look. Well, give me a chance to close the door. See that dog team coming down the slope? Oh, I see something black moving against the snow. Could be a dog team. It's my dad. Beats me how you can recognize him that far away. Well, it's time for dad's team, and dad's always on schedule. Good morning, Mrs. Hanley. Oh, hello, Riggs. Hello, Mr. Riggs. Here comes my dad right on time. That's right, Dave. Your father's a good freighter, one of the best in our line. Now he's out of sight. He's in the valley. It'll take him about... Ten minutes to cross the valley, and then I'll be in sight again. Then Whitey will run to meet him. <laughs> Say, I wonder if he brought us anything from Dawson, Whitey. Glad to see he's back safe and sound. Did you have any doubt he would be? Well, there's always more risk when a freighter carries lots of cash and gold coins. Is my dad carrying gold? I sure hope so, Dave. He's supposed to bring the pay for all the pelts that sent to Dawson. Oh. <laughs> Starting tomorrow, my place will look like a bank. With all the trappers coming in to collect the payment for the highs and pelts they turned in. What's that? It sounded like a shot. It came from the valley. It came from down there where my dad is. What do you make of it, Riggs? I don't know. Maybe Dad's in trouble. Maybe crooks are waiting for him. I'm going to find out. Dave, come back here. Oh, Riggs, call him back. Dave, wait. Wait till I get a gun and I'll go with you. In the valley, cut off from view, Big Bill Martin struggled bravely against three attackers. The lead dog of the team, shot from the trail side to halt the sled, lay on the snow. The other dogs, confused and angry, fought in tangled harness. All right, hold his arm. Give me a chance to crack his head. Trying to hold him. Shoot him if he's done with him. No, no. 
You want to hang from where they are? Hey, you let him go. You dog, will you? With one arm free, Big Bill swung a hard fist to the jaw of the nearest attacker, then snatched the handkerchief that covered the face of another. You skunk, I'll see your face. No! Oh. Grindley, you fool, you shot him. Well, he snatched the bandana off my face. He saw me. Grab the gold and let's clear out. Yeah. Hurry up. Several days after the theft of the gold, Sergeant Preston, who had been assigned to investigate the robbery at Nugget Crossing, talked to Widow Handley at her general store. Word of the robbery reached Dawson, Mrs. Handley. That's why he came here. Now, what can you tell me? Well, there's not much to tell. There was a shooting as well as a robbery. Who was shot? Bill Martin, a driver for the freight line. It wasn't serious. He's getting well. I don't know Bill Martin. He's a fine man, Sergeant Preston. A good dog man. He worked up in Alaska until he lost his wife, and then he came here with his boy, a 12-year-old, to get away from old associations. The gold was stolen from his sled? Yes. Anything else? Only the money, but there was about $10,000. It was a cash that had been sent from Dawson to pay all the trappers for the furs they turned in here. When I didn't have it, they were mighty put out. And then they got to talking among themselves and holding me responsible. Well, isn't the freight company responsible? Yes, that's how I understand it. Mr. Riggs wrote to the home office, and it'll be some time before he has a reply. But the men won't wait. Where'd the robbery take place? In the valley east of here. Riggs and I were standing in front of the store with Dave. Dave? Big Bill Martin's boy. He saw Bill coming down the side of the mountain with a dog team. He went out of sight in the valley. Then we heard a shot. Riggs and Dave started out to see what it meant. And just as they started, there was a second shot. They found the lead dog dead and Martin unconscious and beaten up considerable. They brought him in on the sled. Where does he live? He has a house a little ways outside of town, one he bought from a trapper. But he's not there now. He's in my living quarters. I put an extra cot in a room where Dave sleeps. You see, when Big Bill is out on the job, his son always stays here with me. I'd like to talk to him. He'll want to talk to you. Claims he saw one of the three men who attacked him. He can identify the crook. Oh, Come this way, Sergeant. Wait there, King. Riggs is with Big Bill. Well, the room is over this way. It's an extra room we've built on the side. Oh. Sounds like Big Bill's feeling strong. Yeah. My hand we get Now this take way. it easy, Bill. Here's company. Oh. Mowdy. Good. Sergeant Preston, Bill Martin. How Glad to know you, Bill. You know Mr. Riggs? Hello, Sergeant. Yes, of course. How are you, Riggs? Fine, thanks. Well, I'm mighty glad you're here, Sergeant Preston. I... Say, aren't you the man who travels with a dog named Yukon King? That's right. Oh, I've heard about you and your dog. Oh, wait till my son hears you and King are in town. <laughs> Where is your son? He's at the kennel hitching the team to a sled to take me home. I told him he might borrow a team. Bill, you're not going home. Not yet. You're not strong enough. Oh, I'm strong enough now, my Handley. Plenty strong enough. And I'll be a lot more comfortable at home. Martin, Mrs. Handley told me something about the robbery and the attack on you. Ah, those murdering crooks. Sergeant, they killed that lead dog. And for that, they're going to pay. She was the prettiest and smartest little Siberian you ever saw. I'll get those critters. Now, Bill, your job is to get well. Sergeant Preston will take care of the manhunt. Sergeant Preston can't identify him. Can you? Yes, sir. I can identify at least one of the polecats. I pulled away the handkerchief that covered his face. I'd know him if I saw him again. And that's why he shot me. Now, Bill, after Oh, you... Riggs, let's not start the argument all over again. What is the argument? Riggs here claims I can't be sure of any identification. Because I only had a glimpse of the man's face before he shot me. After all, Bill, you... Sergeant Preston will agree that many innocent people have been made to suffer because of a mistaken identification. Just don't you worry about me making any mistake. As soon as I'm able to get around, I'm going to start looking for the man who shot me. Sakes alive, what's going on in the store? Well, it's King barking. And I hear Whitey, Dave's dog. Oh, mercy. If those two dogs get scrapping, those will fall They're Whitey. not fighting, Mrs. Handley. When King barks like that, he's only playing. Even playing, little Whitey's likely to get hurt. I'll go take care of them. Bill, I know there's no point in trying to argue with you, but I think you should stay careful. Well, be careful. Don't snap at that big dog's leg. Steady, King. That's enough. Calm down, boy. Come on. Aren't you Dave Martin? Yes, sir, and this is my dog, Whitey. I don't know who owns that big dog, but, oh, he's a beauty. He and Whitey are friends already. Glad to meet you, Dave. You too, Whitey. <laughs> this is Yukon King. Yukon King? 
You... I'm Sergeant Preston. I've just been talking to your father. Oh, golly. Your father said you were lining up a team to take him home. Yes, sir. Mind if I go with you? You? You mean you and King? You'd come to our house? We'd like to, Dave. It'll give me a chance to ask your father more about the robbery. Why do you hear that? <laughs> Is the sled ready? Yes, sir. It's right out front. Then let's go get your father ready for the trip. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Pack or 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Pack o' 10, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. The trapper's cabin, which Bill Martin had bought for a home, was a few miles from town. The trip there was uneventful. Dave's small dog, Whitey, and big Yukon King frolicked on the way and became fast friends. At the cabin, Dave built a big fire in the fireplace, while the Mountie helped Bill from the sled and made him comfortable on a bunk. Ah, oh, sure is good to be home. Comfortable, Bill? Sure am. It'll soon be time for supper. I'll see what's in the light. Oh, wait, Dave. You better take the sled and dog team back to Riggs' kennel. If you start now, you'll be back before dark. Now? But can't I go back in the morning with the dog team? Mr. Riggs won't I'd be. rather you left at once, Dave. I'll see that your father has a good supper, son. Then I'd like to visit the valley and look over the scene of the robbery. Well, it'll be dark by the time you get there. If there's a scent left, King will find it in spite of the darkness. Yes, sir. Wait at Riggs or Mrs. Handley's until I call for you. You needn't call for me, Sergeant Preston. I'll, I'll have no trouble getting back here, especially with Whitey along. Dave, you do as the sergeant says. Yes, sir. Now get going, son. I'll see you later. Yes, Dad. Come on, Whitey. I'll wait for you, Sergeant. Thanks, Dave. You, uh... You had a reason for sending my son away, didn't you, Sergeant? Yes, I did, Bill. One of those crooks knows you can identify him. He couldn't act while you were in town because there were too many people around. Here, it'll be different. If he knows you're here and thinks you're alone, he may make the move that will trap him. Come here to finish me off. Yeah. You said you were going to the valley with King to try to find a scent of the thief. I didn't say that, Bill. I said I'd like to visit the valley. I would like to, but I'm not going to. Oh. I hope Dave gives the impression that I have gone, so people in town will think you're here alone. As soon as it's dark, we'll set a trap and hope the thief walks into it. When Dave returned to town, he found himself the center of attention. Everyone was asking questions about Sergeant Preston. The boy was fairly bursting with pride because he could tell the plans of the Mountie. Word spread rapidly. Soon, three men made plans in a corner of the cafe. They were the three who had shot Big Bill and stolen the trapper's gold. Poison. Someone's got to kill Big Bill. Why not draw for it to pick the man? We already picked the man, Gridley. Me and Hank picked you. You were handy with your gun the last time, Gridley. Shoot Bill again. Only this time, make it permanent. Why should I be the one? Because you're the one Bill Martin saw. You're the one who was careless. Why don't all three of us go to the cabin? It's a one-man job. You are the man. Orders from the boss, Gridley. If you don't like the orders, go and tell the boss. Otherwise, get started. Well, uh, Hank said get started. All right. I'll see you later, boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, Bill. You know, I don't like the idea of going after Gridley and shooting him after he shot Bill. You don't like the orders? Tell the boss. That's what you said to Gridley. I'm not arguing about the orders. Gridley's a careless fool. He let Bill see his face. That was a bad mistake. And the boss won't keep a man who makes mistakes. Besides, it would be more of the gold for us if we don't have to split with Gridley. Yeah. How long should we wait before we start after him? Well, just give him time to get out of town. And we'll move Darkness enveloped the cabin in the timberland. 
Inside the cabin, the only light came from the burning logs in the fireplace. There was a man-sized mound beneath the blankets on the bunk. But Big Bill was not in bed. He sat in a dark corner wrapped in more blankets. Sergeant Preston and King were at his side. Presently, the dog growled softly. Listen, King hears something. And my men are waiting for the man. Quiet, King. Steady, boy. King's watching the door. The latch moves. The door's open. Two men and the dog watched the door swing slowly inward. A hand and a gun appeared. The gun was leveled at the mound on the bed. And then... Take him, King. King leaped. His jaws clamped on the hand that held the gun. We want to. Preston moved after King. Rifles cracked somewhere in the darkness. Someone shot him. Hold it, King. That skunk tried to kill me, and then someone shot him. Who fired from outside? We'll find out, Bill. There'll be tracks and a fresh scent for King to follow. First, I want to look at this man. I can see his face from here. He's the one who shot me. He's dead. Well, he deserved it, the ordinary skunk. Look at the holes in the blanket. I'd be dead if I'd have been sleeping here. I heard two different rifles. Yeah, so did I. Must have been at least two men. I want to go after them, Bill. I'll spread a blanket over this man. Do you mind if I leave him here with you for an hour or so? No, go and get those killers. They may circle and come here to see if you're dead. I can use a gun. I'll leave King with you. He'll give warning if anyone approaches the cabin. If you need him to follow the scent. Oh, there's a moon. I can follow the tracks in the snow. <laughs> You're staying here, King. On guard, boy. I'll be back as soon as possible. See you later, Bill. Right. In town, a small white dog whined and whimpered at the door of Riggs' living quarters. He wanted to be inside with his 12-year-old master. But I can drive a dog team, Mr. Reese. Sergeant Preston will tell you. Please give me a job. You're too young, Dave. Now that settles it. I'll not argue any longer. Fine, Mr. Reese. Now, you'd better get back to Mrs. Handley's. Yes, sir. I'll get my park. I left it in the other room. While you're in there, Dave, turn out the lamp. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jake, now get that dog out of here. What's the idea of coming in without rapping? Get that dog out. Get out, you mud. Get out. Hey, hey boss. Wait, Ridley shot him three times. What's that about my dad? You blabbering fool. Who shot my dad? Shut the door, quick. Tell me, tell me, do you hear? Let go of me, kid. Get back. Oh, you fool. Yeah. You let the cat out of the bag. That's Martin's boy. I'm going for Sergeant Fred. Grab him. I got him. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, I'm telling the law. I heard Hold him. Don't let him yell. Give me a hand. Uh, get a gag. Outside the door, the small dog whined and clawed in an effort to help the boy he knew to be in trouble. Dave, despite his struggles, was quickly tied and gagged. Then he was tied to a chair in the corner. Hello, boss. Gosh, I didn't know he was here. I wouldn't have said so much. You should have made sure I was alone. You should have rapped on the door. Yeah, I know, boss, but we were in a rush to tell you the news. We got Gridley. Sure of that? We got him, all right, Rick. Two shots in the back. And the bullets were not to make sure they're fatal. You sure Gridley got Martin? He shot three times at less than ten feet. That should have done it. What about the boy? We're talking mighty free in front of him. He already knew enough to hang us, thanks to Hank's big mouth. Oh, well... What do we do about him? Wait until later when everyone's asleep. And we'll put him on a sled and take him on a one-way trip. A trip to Rush Falls. Good, Good idea. idea. I'll tell Ma Handley he decided to go back to the cabin for the night. Yeah, meanwhile, how about giving us our share of the gold? Sergeant Preston, following the beeline tracks of two men, was two-thirds of the way to town when a small animal streaked past in the opposite direction. Concentrating on the manhunt, the Mountie hardly noticed Whitey. He didn't suspect that it was Dave's dog racing for a powerful friend whose help was needed. Whitey reached the cabin and barked frantically. <coughs> King inside the cabin heard Whitey and responded. Then Bill Martin, weak though he was, crossed the room and opened the door. Whitey, what are you doing here? The dog talk was something Bill had never heard. He didn't understand it, but King understood. He looked at Bill, then leaped into the night. <coughs> At the open door, Bill watched King streaking toward town with Whitey tagging far behind. Those dogs are sure in a hurry. I wonder where they're going. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the night. The two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And ball. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Packle 10s. 
The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Pop Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. By the spacing, the depth, and the general appearance of the footprint, Sergeant Preston estimated the approximate size and weight of the man he sought. When he reached town and lost the print on snow that was packed to icy hardness, he went to the cafe. Walking the entire length of the room, he eyed each man as he passed. No man present had wet boots. None matched the Mountie's approximation of the killing. From the cafe, the Mountie went to the building where Riggs made his home and office. He saw a window. The light shone through the drawn shade. He advanced and rapped on the door. Who's there? Sergeant Preston, I want to talk to you, Riggs. Just a minute. Hello. I have some news about the robbery. Mind if I step in? Well, uh, it isn't convenient. Can't you wait until morning? Not very well. I'm looking for two men. I'm sure they're in town. No one's been here except Dave Martin. He left some time ago. Riggs, one of the robbers was shot and killed by the other two. I can tell you something about their appearance. Perhaps you can... Sergeant Preston left his sentence suspended. His eyes were fixed on wet footprints on the wooden floor inside the room. Riggs knew that he'd been caught in a lie. He knew that when the Mountie entered the room and saw Dave bound and gagged, there'd be a showdown. He drew a gun. Come in. A gun, eh? That's a foolish move, Riggs. I said come in. And keep your hands at your shoulders. Sergeant Preston stepped into the room and saw two other men with guns. And Dave tied and gagged. Keep him covered, Hank. Uh, Jake, you take his gun. I'll close this door. All right. Now you know the truth, Preston. The two men I trailed. So you're with them, Riggs. The boy learned the truth, too. That's why we had to tie him. Too bad you didn't turn away before you saw those footprints. As soon as you saw those, I knew you'd learn the whole story. I suppose the stolen cash is in this room. As a matter of fact, it is. While Sergeant Preston, disarmed, studied the three men and calculated his chances, there was a scratching on the door. Riggs muttered. Sounds like that confounded mutter's returned. What's the next move, Riggs? You and the boy are taking a sleigh ride. Your bodies will be found a long way from here. Watch him, Hank. Don't take any chances with him. I'll tie and gag him. Meanwhile, Jake, you go and hit your strong team to a sled. Right, boy. And drive that dog away for keeps. Riggs turned to get ropes in the gag as Jake reached for the door. Instead of the little white dog he'd expected to see, it was King who'd been clawing at the door. <laughs> King leaped into the room, knocking Jake off balance. And I'm King! <laughs> Hank, holding the gun, diverted his eyes for an instant. It was all Preston needed. The mounty charge. <laughs> Preston dived low, grabbing Hank below the knees. Hank's bullet went over the mounty's head. As he fell, Hank dropped his gun. He saw that Riggs was down. King had a firm grip on his arm, but Jake had drawn his gun. He and Preston fired almost together. Oh! Preston shot with a split second faster. His bullet smashed Jake's hand. Jake's shot went wild. Hold it! Hold it, Don't oh, shoot, don't shoot, shoot, shoot another arm. You took my gun. Take his dog off. Call him off. Let it do, King. On guard, boy. Stand up, Riggs. That, that dog. Stand over there beside your pal. Oh. You too. Oh, my, my hand's busted. I'll see to this dress. Move over there. What's over, shouting and shouting. Hey, what's going on here? What's the truth? Dave, Dave, oh, my soul. Let me take out that gang. Mrs. Handley, the stolen cash is in this room. Those men in rigs are thieves. The fourth member of the gang is dead. Oh, my sake. They're under arrest for robbery and murder. Riggs a crook? Oh, I can't believe it. There, there, you must know. I'll untie your hands. Oh, you poor boy. I killed my dad. No, they didn't, Dave. Big Bill's all right. All right? I'll take you to him as soon as we put these cooks in jail. It was late at night before the dead man had been removed from Big Bill's cabin by men from town. But Bill, his son, and Sergeant Preston had no thought of sleep. There was too much to discuss, too many notes to compare. We found the stolen cash in the office. Riggs told everything in the hope of escaping the hangman. He signed a confession. Well, that just about covers it, Bill, but I still don't know how King happened to be on hand to save my life. Well, I, I can answer that one, Sergeant. <laughs> Look at him and Whitey over there. They're pals, you see. Oh, yes? Well, well, Whitey knew that Dave was in trouble. And it was more trouble than Whitey could handle. So, Whitey needed help. He came here and got that help. Yukon King. Oh. Well, that 
answers the last question, Bill. I'd say this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The hills and canyons of the Old West echo the exploits of one of the truly great trailblazers of the mid-19th century, the daring and fearless Wild Bill Hickok. Back in the days when the West was young and ruthlessness was at the end of a six-shooter, Wild Bill began his career as an Indian scout. Later, he became a stage driver along the Santa Fe and Oregon Trail and was known as the greatest marksman of all. During the life of this famous Westerner, as a sharpshooting U.S. Marshal, we find spine-tingling adventure in the best tradition of the Old West. For when Wild Bill rides, excitement and suspense ride with him. So, get ready for action to live again through the historic era of two-gun justice. You can thrill to the colorful adventures of Wild Bill Hickok every Sunday with screen star Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his deputy Jingle on Mutual over most of these stations. An easy assignment. That's what the inspector called it. But the inspector couldn't see into the future. He had no way of knowing that the sergeant would be at the mercy of a half-crazed killer in one of the most remote parts of the Yukon. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.